down and lying either with your knees bent or your legs long. However you are most comfortable. And actually, actually no, maybe, maybe um, start with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. Because I think we will do a little bit of movement before we settle with this first part of the meditation. So that's it, knees bent, feet standing on the floor. And just start by letting your knees tilt a little bit to the right and to the left. So starting off with a little bit of movement and using this movement. So not necessarily going as far as you possibly can, but using the movement to help you feel your body. So how does your body feel right now? Particularly around the back of the pelvis, the lower back into the hip joints. I'm gonna mute everyone um, for the moment. And if you, if you do want to say anything, just remember you can press your space bar and hold it down and then you can speak. And then let your legs settle down. So you could keep the knees bent, you could lengthen your legs out if you prefer. And then just come to feeling the weight of your head on the floor. And feeling that the head is heavy, you can then start to let the head roll a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. And just easing out the back of your neck. from letting your head roll from side to side, then settle the center of the back of your head down on the floor in a comfortable place. And what I'd like you to do now is bring your hands onto the front of your body and bring your attention to your breathing. And I'll read you the little bit from the meditation here from Thich Nhat Hanh. So he says, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So very, very simple. We're not doing anything to the breathing. We're just, as we breathe in, we're aware that we're breathing in. As we're breathing out, we're aware that we're breathing out. And you could to yourself, and just for three or four cycles of breath, as the breath comes in, you could say in to yourself. As the breath leaves you, you could say out to yourself. And in naming our breath in this way. Maybe it helps us to keep our focus with our breathing and not get distracted too much by our thoughts. So breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So one more cycle of breath, in, out. And then once more, if your legs are long, um, bend your knees and bring your feet to stand on the floor. And come back a few times to letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And again, remember, you're not necessarily going as far as you can. You're finding a movement that feels good in your body right now. And then from here, just pause in the middle for a moment and take your feet a bit wider apart. So your feet are as wide as your mat. And then carry on letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And see how it feels with, that's it, with the legs in this new arrangement. 
Now just be aware in this one that you're letting both knees go down, that's it, towards the side. Sometimes we maybe leave one leg behind a little bit more. So just give yourself time. That's it, to let both knees go down to each side. If it's comfortable for you, you could let your knees come all the way down to one side or as far as they go. If it's comfortable to stay there, stay there for a breath or two and let your head roll in the opposite direction. That's nice. And then let your knees, you might come back to the centre, just do a little bit of rocking from side to side again. And then let your knees rock down to the other side. And let them stay there if that's comfortable for a couple of breaths and let your head roll in the opposite direction. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. So breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And then from here, come back to the centre and just for a moment before we come off our backs, do whatever you'd like to do with your legs. I'm always interested to watch and see, see what people would like to do. Yeah, that's it. Holding knees in, taking legs up towards the ceiling. Those things are happening, lengthening legs out on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> there's only so many options of what you can do there. But yeah, all of those things are good. And then from here, what we're going to do is roll over onto one side and you're going to come to sit in cobbler pose leaning back onto your arms. You come to sit here. So for the moment I've got you muted. I, I probably will at some point um, unmute you, but maybe let's, let's keep it like this for the, for the time being. So from here, just see how it feels to have a couple of breaths in cobbler pose. We're not going to stay here long. From here, let one knee come on top of the other knee slide your leg back and come on into pinwheel and a little bit of circling here seeing how this feels so circle in one direction that's very nice you can go back the other way a little bit of circling here lovely and then in your own time you're going to turn so you're lining up your body with the knee that's going out to the side, as we usually do, and then fold down over that leg and see how it feels to have a few breaths in this forward bend. Good, there's someone arriving. Hello, Rachel. Hi, hello. I can't hear you, but I can see you, so it's fine. You don't need to be able to speak. Can you hear me? You can hear me. Okay, great. So Rachel, we were, when you're ready, when you joined us, we were in cobbler pose, going on into pinwheel and folding down in pinwheel. So we've just done a few things on our backs. You haven't done much. So another breath or two in pinwheel on this side, seeing how that feels. And then when you're ready, you can walk your hands in towards you, come up, back up into sitting up pinwheel, bring this back knee on top of the front knee, the knee you just folded over, open your legs out into cobbler pose. And then carry on to the second side. I'm just noticing as I do this how dirty my feet are, so hopefully that doesn't show in Zoom, maybe not in the slide. Slide your top leg back and a little bit of circling. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. So just circling, settling. So today we're going to be doing some things on hands and knees, and then we're going to be coming over into standing and doing some things there. 
and Kayla, I was thinking of you today because we're doing a mudra today, but it's a mudra that's a whole body mudra. So it sort of came to me, I didn't invent it. I remembered it as I was planning the class and practicing. So from here, if you turn now to face the knee that's going out to the side, as we did on the other side, and fold forward and out. Ah, a few breaths here. Just settling forwards. And you could come back to, so that focus we had at the beginning of class, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So Rachel, we're using this Thich Nhat Hanh meditation through the class, both in movement and in sort of more quiet places. So have another breath or two in your pinwheel forward bend. And then start to walk your hands in towards you. And then from pinwheel, we're going to come on to hands and knees. So I thought the first thing that might be quite nice would just be to lengthen each leg out behind us. So we're letting ourselves arrive on hands and knees. And then let's settle on hands and knees. And let's do a bit of cat to start with. So you might want to do a little bit of circling of your shoulders over your hands, feeling your handprints on the floor. And when you're ready, rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine down to the floor seeing how this feels today. But what I'd like you to try in your cat today is to think about where you're looking. So look back behind you and let your back round to the ceiling to help you do that. And then let your gaze travel forwards on the floor and look forwards and let your spine dip down to help you with that. So I'm just going to come and have a look at you and That's nice, good. I might unmute people for a bit and if it gets noisy, um, I'll mute you again. So some of you have to ask for me. So don't worry too much. If you want to be unmuted, you can unmute yourselves. Good, so something, yeah. Lovely. And then also the other thing you could do on hands and knees is perhaps a little bit of tail wagging. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe just a little bit of tail wagging. So imagine you have your fish's tail, you have your dog's tail, and you're swishing your tail from side to side. And it might be quite nice to come down onto your forearms for a minute. Just take the weight out of your wrists and your hands, come down onto your elbows. You can still carry on with that tail wagging movement. Because then coming back onto hands and knees, we're going to be moving into a dog pose and just seeing how dog pose feels today. But before we go there, tuck your toes under and do a little bit of rocking forwards and back with your toes tucked under. So this rocking back is the beginning of the journey to dog pose. So perhaps the next time you rock back, you could stay back, keep the hips back over the heels, keep leaning through your arms, then pick your knees up off the floor and start to lengthen into one leg and then the other. So what I'd like you to do in this first dog pose is bend one knee and then the other knee. And bend your knee quite a lot, so you're coming right up onto the ball of your foot and then the ball of the other foot. So you're thinking about working into the feet, really mobilising the feet, flexing the feet. Good. Very nice. Yeah, so we're doing dog pose, but we're also thinking about this. How, much, how can we really bend the knees, get those feet moving? And then coming back down onto hands and knees. And I was rather excited when I was practicing today because I remembered, I remembered something we hadn't done for ages. So sitting, kneeling, maybe sit kneeling for a moment and just shake your hands out. And perhaps maybe watch this. I mean, it's quite straightforward. And some of you may remember this from 
ages ago. We're going to first of all take one leg back behind us and we're going to roll. You can roll with the toes tucked under, the foot flat, just exploring what you can do with this leg. Then we take that same leg out to the side and again you're rolling onto your heel, onto the top of your toes, you could roll yeah, onto the toes tucked under or flat. And then from there, that leg comes around into lunge. Yeah, you might need to walk this one back a little bit. So, yeah, so I was very pleased to remember this because it's a really nice movement for the hip. So you're going to take one leg back behind you and your starting point is rolling side to side across the foot. So it could be with your toes tucked under, it could be with your foot flat. So it's just, yeah, it's a little bit exploratory to read this one and seeing how this feels in the hip <sighs> and then from here when you take your leg more out to the side there's more possibility because you can be rolling onto your heel and you can be rolling all the way onto the toes folded over you could roll onto the top of the foot if you liked and again noticing how this feels into the hip joint as well as what's going on in the foot. And then from here, we come, it's an interesting way to come into lunge because from here, at that point, you need to let your knee bend. Foot now comes round to lunge from the outside. And then from here, you may well like me. So I've got my hands in between my feet. So this foot's on the outside of my hands. And then I'm walking the back leg away a little bit more. So if that's something you want to do. So just make sure that your front knee is over your heel and you could be resting down onto your hands and just having a couple of breaths. If you prefer to bring this front knee between your hands that's absolutely fine <sighs> and have a few breaths wherever you are. <sighs> so yeah either hands on the outside of the feet or in between them and then from here just bring that leg sort of ease it back next to the other one. And we'll do the other side. So you don't need to turn around. I'm just turning around. So you don't necessarily need to look at me, but if you do want to, you can. So lengthen your le other leg back behind you. So we're coming back to the leg being behind us. How can we roll across the toes here? Toes tucked under. You can come onto the top of your toes. You can come onto the underside of your toes roll across the foot, explore the movements there. And then from there, I just, again, why I thought this was a good one to do on Zoom is we have the, maybe, hopefully, have the space for it. <laughs> so, you're not sticking your foot in someone else's face. So your foot's now come out to the side. And so you can roll onto your heel, onto the underside of your toes, onto the top of your toes and just see how these movements feel all the way up through the leg into the hip joint. And then from here, this foot can creep forwards so it comes round to the outside of your hands. And then you probably, like me, may need to tuck your back toe under, walk your back leg away a bit more so we come a bit lower into our lunge. You could keep your foot on the outside of your hands or you could walk the foot in between the hands. So that's really personal preference, whatever you think feel, feels, I was going to say good, but lunges, but lunges may be more challenging than good. And a couple of breaths here. From here, we're going to go on into dog pose. So you could go straight into dog from your lunge or you could come onto hands and knees. If you're going to go straight into dog it's probably better if your foot comes between your hands and you can exhale down into your hands, step that foot back and then maybe walk the feet in a bit if, it, if your dog is a bit too long. Now in this dog pose I'd like you to continue some of what we were doing in that last movement by doing the one where you're rolling onto the top of your feet, feet one at a time. That's it. So roll through the tips of your toes all the way onto the very top of your toes. So Beata, we may not have done that one. Nice. I think that's okay. 
Yeah, so rolling all, yeah, can you roll all the way? So that's the tips of your toes. Can you roll all the way right on that sit, one oh, at a time? Okay. And it's a really good stretch for the front of the ankle. That's nice, yes, yes. So I rather like this one. So, because often I find this movement can be quite, say painful, but yes, painful, this stretching out the front of the ankle. But in this position, I find it quite helpful. And then whenever you want to, from this dog pose, you might just want a few breaths where you're not rolling onto the top of your foot. But whenever you want to, you're then going to fold down into child pose. And have a couple of quiet breaths in child pose. And we could come back to where we started with this breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And see how that feels now. If you're happier in kneeling than child, by all means be in kneeling. It's absolutely fine. And then in your child pose, Slide your hands a little bit further forwards and plant your hands on the floor. So it might be at this point that your elbows come off the floor. Plant your hands on the floor and then come up onto hands and knees. So this, you should be in quite long hands and knees. Now, if your hands are very wide apart, you might want to make them a bit closer so they're shoulder, you don't, you know, so they're shoulder width apart. Because what you're going to start to do here is just this, um, beginning of rocking towards face up dog and you may not so some of you may be very happy to go all the way into face up dog now and let your pelvis hang but others of you it might not feel quite right yet so it might just be a bit more of an easing in there how does it feel not pushing it taking your time and there's plenty of time for this so if it feels for you, to, for you then, then it might be good to do one of the other movements into face up dog you could try. So you could try tucking your toes under, rounding your back to the ceiling, rocking your hips back over your heels, and then traveling forwards into face up dog, rounding your back. So this will help if your lower back feels that it could do with lengthening out a bit. So that's a possibility. You could reverse that and do it again so round your back rock back tuck your toes under look back towards your feet let a breath come in and then travel forwards watching your pelvis come forwards until your shoulders are right over your hands <sighs> now just rock back into child pose for a couple of breaths and we'll do a teeny little bit more face up dog but come back into child or into kneeling if you prefer, and just give your hands a little bit of a rest for a moment. Let's have a look. Yes, if you come into kneeling, you could shake your hands out. Absolutely. Yeah. Very nice. And then it's really up to you if you want to do a little bit more face up dog. So again, you could be in this long hands and knees position. You could come back to seeing, you know, what does it feel if I just rock my pelvis forwards? Or you could see what's it like if I do this one, the, um, the one where we swing our pelvis from side to side that we've been doing a bit more recently. So the pelvis, a bit like tail wagging. We move in a snaky sort of movement back towards child and forwards towards face up dog. Just one more face up dog in your own time. Again, you might want to rock back either into child pose or into kneeling and give the hands. If you come into kneeling, you can give your hands a little shake out. 
you could bring the backs of your hands together and just move so you're moving the wrists in the other direction lengthening out the back of the wrists to give the hands a little bit of a wiggle so we're going to come into another dog pose and if you want to you can try your one leg dog poses in this one so i think you will know these are just as a reminder you can have your pelvis level you can roll your pelvis and you can also bend that top knee if you're rolling your pelvis and let that foot drop back behind you so yeah come in, why don't you come into you can any any of those or all of them and see how they feel good and if they don't feel particularly helpful this evening then obviously don't do them just do a normal sort of quiet dog pose and these one leg dog poses are much more about movement than staying anywhere so how does it feel to raise one leg how does it feel to roll your pelvis once you've raised that leg how does it feel to bend that top leg and drop the foot down behind you it's, these things are going to feel different on any given day. It's lovely. And then from here, so you can be, might be nice to just have a couple of quiet breaths in dog before you come out of dog pose. That's it. So sort of settling settling down if it's possible to be quiet in dog if the back of your legs are still shouting quite a bit or your shoulders are feeling tense then it may be that you need to keep moving in dog but if it's possible to be quiet there for a breath or two and then i'm going to give you a little choice for the next thing we're going to come back to the breathing we did right at the beginning you can be a kneeling child pose or lying on your belly so Rachel for you it might be quite good to be on your belly actually you like being on your belly don't you and it's it's better, probably better for your, your leg so if you come to lie on your belly just lie however's comfortable with your maybe with the side of your head on the ground so wherever you are child pose kneeling or lying on your belly hopefully one of those will have <laughs> sound appealing yeah so choose whichever Choose whichever sounds most appealing to you, not which, not which you should think you should be doing. Good. And then I'd like you to come back again to the little Thich Nhat Hanh meditation. Breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. So very, very simple as the breath comes in, you can say in to yourself, you name it. As the breath leaves you, you say out. Again, naming the exhalation. And let's see how it is to have three more cycles of breath in whichever position you've chosen. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And from here, we're going to Come up into standing and maybe sort of quite quietly, we're going to come to dog pose and a forward bend. But think about keeping that sort of quality of attention with your breathing as you move through these, these familiar movements. So placing your hands on the floor with awareness, tucking your toes under, exhaling, rocking your hips back and then up into dog pose. And just being in dog pose for a breath or two or three, feeling your breath moving through you. And from dog pose, 
slowly walking your hands in towards your feet so you end up in a forward bend. So all of the weight is in your feet. You could take your hands off the floor if you like. If your lower back needs support, you can bend your knees, rest your elbows on your thighs. Let your head hang. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then as you exhale, roll up into standing. Keep your head heavy. If your back needs some support, walk your hands up your thighs. We're coming up into standing. Surprisingly tall. So, arriving in your mat, moving in your mat, arriving on your mat in standing. And just have a look at your feet. So you're settling your feet down hip width apart and parallel. We're going to do a little bit of swaying here from side to side. And then we're going to settle in standing with the next part of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditation, which we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be thinking about a bit more in standing. So close your eyes and see how it feels to let your weight shift over the right leg and foot, over the left leg and foot. So really feeling the right footprint on the floor, the left footprint on the floor. And from swaying in this way, side to side, let yourself settle down in the centre. So you can settle in standing. Let your arms hang, let your shoulders drop. Feel your head balanced on the top of your spine. So now, breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. Just see how it feels for a couple of cycles of breath to repeat this to yourself. So breathing in, flower. Breathing out, fresh. So we're imagining ourselves, perhaps our head as the, the blossom of the flower on the top of the stem of our spine and the feet rooted down into the soil. Breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. And let's come to a few movements here. These are perhaps less flower-like movements. They're movements now just about easing. So let's um, do this loose swinging twist. And then we'll be coming back to some movements where we're, again, inviting ourselves to see ourselves as a flower. And it may be something that resonates with you, it may not be. So, yeah, let's see. So here we can slap our hands onto the body. Our body. I was just thinking this is usually when <laughs> it's um, applause time, isn't it? Yeah. Now, not tonight. Good, just a couple more times. And then let's let that go. And then come to the one that I've already been doing quite a lot at the moment, this reaching up into one arm, into the other. As you reach, you shift your weight into that leg and foot. So that side of the body lengthens. And I suppose if we're thinking about the sort of flower imagery, this could be like a, a flower that's, or a plant that's really sort of reaching up, growing up to the sun. And then from here, we're going to swoop all the way down into a forward bend. Let the head go, let the arms go. <sighs> Heavy and floppy for a couple of breaths. Good, very nice. Let the breath come in and on an exhalation, you can sink into your heels, roll back up into standing or walk your hands up your thighs if you need that extra bit of support for your back. And then once you're in standing, just settle yourself back down, feet tip width apart and parallel. Take your arms wide as you breathe in and then give yourself a hug and give yourself a hug with your right arm on top because then you're not going to have to think about 
do what I, which arm we need on top for side two. So from here, we're going to move on into our eagle arms, this one. And what I'd like you to do on this side of eagle arms is to do a little bit of circling of your elbows. So you're, it's like you're drawing a circle with your elbows. And go easily, it's, it's good this one for releasing tension in the shoulders, but if your shoulders are tight, especially if you're working from home, then don't, yeah, don't push it. And then from here, we're going to step the feet a bit wider apart. So I would again go to the sort of um, the edge, the narrow edge of my mat. And then sinking into your heels, you're going to fold forwards with your arms in eagle arms. Keep really rooted into your heels, but let the head be heavy. Let the arms feel heavy. Whenever you want to, you can uncross your arms, but if you like them crossed, <laughs> keep them crossed. So you can uncross your arms whenever you want to, let the arms flop down to the floor or equally keep the arms crossed. Good. Maybe let a breath come in. If you haven't uncrossed your arms, do so. Let them flop down now. Let your head go. <sighs> let a breath come in. As you exhale, roll back up into standing. Keep your feet this wide apart for the moment. And then in this position, we can come into these side lengthening movements. So taking one arm up. The other arm is heavy and floppy. And as with the last one we did, the pelvis moves towards the side where we're reaching up. So we get extra length through that side of the body and this side's yet heavy and floppy. So you can do these a few times from side to side. So I was, yeah, I quite like to move in and out of these ones. I don't find they're always that easy to breathe in but quite nice to feel the lengthening through the side of the body. We'll just, yeah, try and <laughs> try and feel that we even ourselves out or thereabouts. And then let that go. Bring your feet back to Tadasana, so back to hip width apart. Let a breath come in, take your arms wide. Exhale, give yourself a hug with your left arm on top. And then come on into your eagle arms. Now this time we're going to do a slightly bigger movement. I want you to see, can you keep your hips where they are, but move your elbows a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. So it's not just the elbows, is it? it's the shoulders and the head and the ribs, but not below the waist. So if we were thinking about our flower imagery, it could be that from the waist down, you're buried in soil and then you're growing up out of the soil from the waist upwards. And then once more, pause in the center, step your feet wider apart, as wide as that narrow edge of the mat. Let the breath come in, and as you exhale, sink into your heels. <sighs> Fold forwards, let the head go, let the arms go. You can keep your arms crossed or you can uncross them whenever you want to. Good. Let a breath come in as you exhale. If your arms are still crossed, let them go. Let them flop down to the floor. Let your head go. Very nice. Let another breath come in. As you exhale, sink down into your heels. Roll back up again. So what, again, once more when we come back up, keep your feet as wide as the mat, the narrow edge of the mat. Bit of lengthening one side and then the other. So I've got a mixture of some of you muted, some of you not. I might just mute you all now because we're going to be doing a couple of standing balances and I think it's probably helpful to have the quiet. So as I'm muting you, why don't you just do this on each side once more and make the most of the time to lengthen out. So mute you all now. And you do get, remember that if you want to unmute yourself, just press that space bar if you want to ask anything. So let that go, the side bending now. Come back to having your feet hip width apart and parallel. And just before we come into the balances, we're going to come back to that part of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditation, um, flower and fresh, and try and take that feeling into the balances. So that, yeah, that sort of quality of being a flower. 
So settle down for a moment. We could do a little bit of swaying. I always find it helpful if I'm going to stand to yeah, let myself shift from side to side. And so from swaying, maybe it's then easier to find a place where we can settle in the centre. Close your eyes, feel yourself in standing. See if you can feel your breath. Breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. So we're going to do two balances. Maybe if I just um, sh 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 tell you what we're going to do in the first one. We're going to come into, very quickly, we're going to come into this position. And from here, you're going to do some sort of expansive movement. And that's the idea of that is that we're from here being gathered into the chest. This is that sort of idea of blooming from, from there. So maybe this is the seed, that's the blossom, um, the bud, the bud rather. So our starting point for here is reaching the right arm up. Letting the left arm be heavy and floppy, shifting our weight into our right leg. Let the ball of the left foot come off the floor. And then we're going to be catching the top of the left foot. Let the right shoulder drop and then bring the right hand down to your breastbone. So this might be the position where we're thinking about the flower being like a bud or closed for the evening. And then from here, you can, you know, where could you go to? You might want to move somewhere if you quite like where you've come to, you could have a few breaths there. If you want to try something else, you could come back to the, the bud position and you could try opening out again in a different position. So the arm reaching forwards, the leg reaching back. And it doesn't matter where you go to as long as it feels enjoyable in your body. And it's fine if you fall out, <laughs> if you need to, you could come back in or you might feel you've had enough on that side. But just this sense of an expansive, blooming movement. Good. And then a little bit of a shake out and we'll try the same thing on the other side. So just gather yourself in, look at your feet, settle down. So this idea of we're growing roots from our feet into the ground, down into the soil. Start to reach up through your left arm. Let the right arm be heavy. Shifting the weight onto the left leg and foot, the right heel comes up. Can the right foot be really, really light? So as it comes off the floor, we barely notice it. The hand can come down to the breastbone. Make sure you feel steady here before you go further. You can always stay here if you like. So again, we have this sense, this is the, the bud or the closed flower. And then can we open ourselves out into a more expansive, blooming, open position. We can try a couple of positions if we like, a couple of possibilities, reaching the arm forwards, reaching the leg back. So it might be that you reach your foot back away from your bottom. And again, not worrying if you <sighs> fall over. Yeah, as long as <laughs> yes. Good. Let me have a look. Very, yeah, very beautiful. Wow, got some nice light going. Got some very nice light going on in some of your, some of your rooms. It's lovely. Okay, come down. Have a little bit of a shake out. I thought between we're going to come into one more balance in a moment, but maybe between balances, it would be good to go down through a forward bend and possibly a squat as well. So I've just grabbed a wedge. If you know that you want something under your heels for your squat, then have it to hand. So feet hip width apart and parallel. Roll down into a forward bend. See how that feels. And it's really about lengthening out our lower backs. So if you feel that's working quite well in the forward bend, that might be enough. If your back would really benefit from heading on into your squat, you can start bending your knees forwards over your feet. 
Good. Again, it's fine if your heels come up. You don't have to put anything under your heels. But if you want to stay in that squat, and you're, yeah, you can always put something under your heels for a few breaths. And letting the pelvis drop, tailbone dropping towards the floor so the lower back can release. And then from here, maybe you can remove your, your book or whatever it is a bit more um, elegantly than I can. Come onto the balls of your feet. Starting to send your heels down and your sit bones up, back into your forward bend. Rolling back up into standing. Good. And a little bit of a shake out before we come. We're going to come into tree pose now. And I, and, um, but maybe think of it as, as being more of a flower than a tree tonight, if that's possible. So just close your eyes for a moment in standing. Feel your footprints on the floor, feel yourself in standing. We're going to be bringing our weight into our right foot like we did for the last balance. And so you can open your eyes now, you can find a point to focus your gaze on. Start to shift your weight onto your right foot and leg and just decide what you're going to do with your left leg. So your foot could be at your ankle, you could have some toes on the floor, you could bring your foot so your heel is just above your knee joint, or you could catch your ankle and bring your foot further up your thumb, and press your foot onto your thigh. And again, we come to this position where the hands are at the breastbone, this time in prayer pose, Anjali Mudra. So this again is this sort of, we could even have the hands in the lotus bud position here where we have some space between the underside of the knuckles. Oops. And then from here, if you feel steady, you can let your arms grow upwards. And again, this is this sense of the flower opening, opening to the sun. Letting the breath come in letting the breath leave you. So breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. And perhaps gathering back into the bud to finish. Yes, coming back down, having a little bit of a shake out. And then settling your feet down, just preparing the ground for side two. So feeling the feet on the floor, bringing your gaze to a point of focus, starting to bring your weight over onto your left leg and foot, deciding where you're going to have your right foot on the inside of the left leg. Just come into this place. We could have the hands as on the other side in this lotus bud mudra space between the underside of the knuckles. And just see if we can feel steady here. If we do, then maybe we can let ourselves open up into this flower-like shape where we're opening up to the sky and the sun. We're feeling the breath come in, we're feeling the breath leave. Yes, so we can gather the hands back down into the bud. Good. And back down into standing and having a bit of a shake out. So we've got a few, a couple more standing things to do. We're going to do another forward bend, but I'd like you to take your feet a bit wider. And in this first one, we're just going to be just doing a bit of bending one knee, bending the other. So I suppose easing ourselves into this wide forward bend. My knees sometimes feel a bit clunky in this. So do, you know, be careful, attentive to your knees. 
and just yeah, see how this feels. Both feet should be pointing forwards. And yeah, how does it feel to be in this wide forward bend? You don't have to bend one knee and then bend the other. Make sure your weight stays in your heels. You all know this one well. Good. Rachel, I don't know whether you want to be a bit wider on your mat. No? You could turn around. Yeah, maybe turn around the other way so your feet. Yes, that's it. Long ways on your mat. Good. A bit confusing with my two mats. Very nice. And just when you've gone from side to side a bit, then maybe just let yourself settle in the centre. So both legs are doing the same thing now. So both knees could be straight or both knees could be a bit bent. Can you really feel your weight in your heels? If your hands are touching the floor, they're ever so light. You could bring your hands to rest on your ankles or you could hold your elbows. So just really feel that you can be in that forward bend, supported through your feet. Oh, yeah, lovely. Good. Good. Excellent. Yeah, Maria, send your weight back into your heels more. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Good. Good. Okay, and then from there, sink down into your heels, roll up into standing. You can release your arms at that point if you're holding your elbows. And give your legs a little bit of a shake out. We're going to come back into a wide forward bend in a moment, but we're just going to do something else before. So coming back into feet hip width apart and hands in prayer pose. So we're going to do a little sequence with the arms. This is very much for the shoulders, so don't push anything if your shoulders are feeling a bit tight. So from here, we're going to exhale. We're going to take the arms down and then up. We're going to touch the hands in prayer pose over the head and then bring the hands down here to the base of the neck. And then leave your right hand where it is and take your left arm in a big circle down and up your back and just see where the hands go to, keeping quiet through the front of your body. And then let the right arm come out the same in a big circle and come up your back a little bit. So both hands are now on your upper back. And then the left arm comes back up through that big circle and down. The back. Good. I'm going to come a little bit nearer so I can see you. And then the right arm comes up again and circles around. And then the left arm. So we just carry on circling. One arm and then the other. The arms move down, the arms move up. But as you're doing this, just try to keep quiet through the front of the body. It doesn't matter where your hands get to. It's really good for mobilizing the shoulders, but it's just, it's not helpful to push it. It's going to be uncomfortable in the shoulders. Good. Very nice. So just keep going. And just see here, it, if, you know, for some of you, it may be possible to catch your hands in cow arms in this one. If you have a belt to hand, and it's not, if it's, if it's not possible to catch your hands, and if you have a belt to hand, you could use your belt or a scarf. Because the two, the two things, when we come back into that wide forward bend, you could try it with your hands in this position. Or some of you, depending how this one works, either bringing the hands towards namaste behind your back or holding your elbows. So I just want you to have a little try and see what you think you might like to try in your wide forward bend. And if you go forward and it just feels awful, then come back up again. So remember, we've got these options. We've got this one, cow arms, maybe using a belt. If you do this one, you'll have to do it twice to do both sides. Or we've got this one, or we've got this one. So whatever you're going to do, you're now going to take your feet wider apart on your mat. So this is why it was so important last time that the weight is in the heels because we haven't got the hands going down to the floor. So we're going to be sinking into the heels and starting to fold forwards and seeing how this feels. And if at any point, if it doesn't feel comfortable for the shoulders or the lower back, then come back 
out again. Good. That's nice, lovely. If you're holding your elbows, you might want to come back out and then try doing it again with the other cross of your arms which is terribly confusing. You've got to sort of catch your elbows the other way, which is going to feel very strange. And equally, if you're doing cow arms and you, you'll need to come back up and change your arms over so you've got the other one on top. <sighs> then coming forwards for a few breaths. Really feel the heels sinking down into the ground. Good, letting the head go, letting the arms go. Very nice. And then whenever you've had enough, come back up and have a little shake out. Or oh, yes, I can see Sandra, it's quite nice to release your arms down. Very nice, yeah, good. So come up and have a little shake out. And then in standing, we're going to, actually before we do that, let's come to this one. So just a little bit of letting all of that go. If that felt a little bit challenging in the shoulders, we're doing something sort of nice and loose and easy now. Swinging the arms. Good. And then we're going to settle in standing again for a different part of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditation. So, Again, one last time, looking at your feet, hip width apart and parallel, settling yourself in standing, a little bit of swaying if you like. If you're comfortable closing your eyes, close your eyes. And from swaying, see if you can settle in the centre, dropping your weight down through both legs and footprints. So now, breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid, steady, stable. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. And perhaps two or three more cycles of breath here, feeling like a mountain in Tadasana, mountain pose. Breathing in mountain, breathing out solid, steady, stable. And in keeping this quiet focus, you're going to make your way to the back of your mat. We're going to come down through a forward bend into dog pose. If you feel that you'd like to revisit your one leg dog poses, you could do. Might be quite nice after the wide forward bend. So, but perhaps first, just quite a quiet forward bend, a quiet dog pose, and then into the one leg dogs if you like. So quiet forward bend, give yourself at least two or three breaths here. How does it feel to be sinking into your heels, giving the weight of your head, your arms and your shoulders to the floor? Just let yourself hang heavy being rather than doing. Very nice. Kayla, just see if you can let your weight shift back a little bit more possibly. That's it, yes, very nice, good. And then big, slow hand prints walking forwards into dog. Arriving in this sort of quiet dog pose. So quiet dog pose to start with, and then it's up to you. If you'd like to try those one leg dog poses again, they might feel quite nice now. If you just want to fold down into child pose, that's um, up to you. Very nice. 
So remember there's the, the one I really like in these one leg dogs is when I let my pelvis roll, but I keep my leg long and I really reach into my heel. So that's it, yes, there's this feeling of length from the hand through to the heel in one side of the body. Very nice. Make sure you keep letting the head go and keep the shoulders as undone as possible. So if it's bringing tension into your shoulders, it's probably telling you it's time to fold down into child pose. Oh, in fact, I've just checked my notes and you have a choice. Child kneeling or on your belly again. So as we did before we came into standing, we're going to have a few cycles of breath, come back to our very first focus in the meditation. So just choose now how you want to be, kneeling, child pose, or lying on your belly. And settling with your breathing. Breathe, yes. So if you're kneeling, just make sure your hands are resting somewhere quietly on your thigh. And if you're on your belly, you're making yourself as comfortable as possible. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In. In, out, perhaps two more cycles of breath. And then we're going to move a little bit more. We're going to do a bit of rolling, taking us into lying down and to doing some things on our backs. So come to sit on your bottom towards the... Sorry, I just have to give an extension lead to Mary. We have a iPad running out of charge crisis. So, problem solved, we're back to the, this position here. So we're going to start like this towards the front of your mat and we're going to do a bit of, um, yeah, we'll start easily, we'll build up to a little bit of rolling back. Is everyone, is everyone okay? Yes, are we okay? Good. Unmute yourself if you would like to speak. Because as I said, I can't unmute you all, so it gets really fiddly with this new Zoom update. So what we're going to do is think about the back being rounded, and to have your make sure your feet are a generous hip width apart. And here, looking down, you're going to be sliding your feet, your hands from your feet to your knees, and leaning back as you do so. And just keep repeating this a few times. So we're starting to really focus in this rounding of the back, feeling that our spine is in a soft forwards curving movement. And just, yes, keep repeating this a few more times. Now, before we go any further, I'd just like you to bring your hands onto the back of your body. And you can always cross your legs for a moment if you want to. So this is the place, the sort of middle of the back is where we're trying to balance in this pose. So when we go a bit further down, we're trying to balance there, the sort of middle of the back, rather than go too low or just rest on the pelvis. So we can roll back, we can let the feet pick up, we can look forwards, we can come back up again. So at this point, I suppose I'm keeping my hands round about my knees. So that's not too fixed. So as you come up, you look forwards, as you go down, you look at your belly, where all of the work is going on. And just keep repeating this. So as you go back, you're trying to 
balance on the middle of your back. Coming forwards, coming back. Keep repeating. We can then add in the lovely lengthening out of the legs, if you like. So going back, what's it like to oh, lengthen the legs out? And the arms have a breath or two. Can we come back up again? Probably bending the knees would help. We'll do this three times if you can bear it. So looking down, rolling back, keep looking down at the belly, keep the front of the chest soft, let the feet come up. Balance on the middle of the back, lengthening the legs out. Can we have a breath or two here? Lots going on in the abdominals. You don't need, you don't need me to tell you that. One last time. Rolling back, looking down at your belly, letting the feet come up. Balancing on the middle of the back, lengthening the legs out. Oh, and then collapsing down onto the floor. That's so, yes. so you've earned a little bit of a lie down. We will be doing some movements here in a moment, but first of all, <sighs> so I often think it's really, I probably always say this, I think it's really nice to bring your hands to your belly after that and feel your belly moving now. So the belly can be completely relaxed now and can move with your breathing. So there are times when we want those abdominal muscles to work hard and they do in movements like that. But there's times like this when we don't need the belly to be doing anything. It can be very passive and respond to our breathing. When you feel like you'd like to move, actually two things, maybe the first thing would be just to let your head roll to the right and to the left a few times as um, the neck can get a bit tight in that last one because the, you know, the muscles in the front of the neck are also working to hold your head up. So let the head ease from side to side. And then if your legs are long, bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And take a moment to feel your footprints on the floor, to feel the back of your pelvis on the floor. And then letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. So coming back to the very first movement and just seeing, ah, oh, that's lovely, seeing how it feels now. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. And then from here, you're going to pause in the center, settle your feet down. Let your arms maybe now come to rest by the sides of your body. And you're going to move up and down through a couple of bridge poses, which always feel nice after boat pose, the, um, the, um, the balance. Lovely. So when we come into bridge, we let the front of the body open, the legs are working, pressing down into the ground, but the belly, the muscles in the front of the body can be quiet. We might feel the belly stretches out as the pelvis comes up, but yeah, the muscles are not active. They're just perhaps being lengthened passively a little bit. Very nice. So yeah, a couple of times rolling up and down. And we will come back to bridge. It's not the only bridge you're going to be doing. <laughs> so um, when you've done a couple of bridge poses, as you take your time, you're going to fold your knees into your chest. And you might also like to take your legs up to the ceiling and give your legs a little bit of a shake out. And then we're going to come to, let's see, we're going to come to another of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditations. And then we're going to move into this body mudra, Tadaka mudra, 
um, where we we imagine that our belly, uh, so our belly empties, and we imagine there's this beautiful pool, like a temple pool, um, on our belly. So, but before we do that, just settle down in lying. So you can either have your knees bent or your legs long. Might be nice to rest your hands on the front of your body so you can connect with your breathing. Breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. So we're breathing in, still water. We're breathing out, reflecting. This is a very beautiful um, verse in the meditation. Breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. So let's see how it feels to take this image into this um, body mudra. I will talk you into it. It is actually quite simple. Um, if you get confused, you will look at me, but um, I think it will make sense. So what you're going to do is lengthen your legs out on the floor. And you're going to bring your hands onto your belly. So we're actually moving in this mudra. So we start with the hands on the belly. And... I'll talk you into it in a moment. So a key part of it is in a moment. So from here, you're not doing this, you're just listening. From here, as we exhale, we take the arms up to rest either side of the head. And we also stretch into the heels at the same time. But don't do it yet. I'll talk you into it. I just want you to be aware that we're taking the arms up, but you're also stretching your heels away from you. And but our starting point is with the hands on the belly. And we're not going to move the arms yet, but we're going to let a breath come in with the hands on the belly. We're going to exhale with the hands on the belly and feel the belly falling back as we exhale. And we imagine this the belly, the hollow of the belly, becomes this beautiful pool of water. Let another breath come in. And then with the next exhalation, you're going to bring your arms up by the sides of your head and at the same time, stretch into your heels. And then receive an inhalation with your arms either side of your head on the floor. The arms need to be, so take them wider if they don't touch the floor. And then with your next exhalation, bring your hands back to your belly again. Now, what I forgot to say is that when we breathe in with our arms either side of our head, we want to keep that feeling of emptiness in the belly. So the in-breath comes into the rib cage and the chest, not the belly. So let's try again. So hands on the belly. Let a breath come in. As you exhale, you're going to stretch into your heels and take the arms up to rest on the floor either side of your head. Receive an inhalation in the, in the ribs, but keeping that empty feeling in the belly. And then as you exhale, bring your hands back to your belly. Let's have one more cycle of breath here. So feel the breath come in. So as we exhale, it's this emptying feeling in the belly. We stretch into the heels. We take the arms up either side of the head. And when the breath comes in, we try to keep that empty feeling in the belly, that temple pool of water. And then as you exhale, your hands come back to your belly. So you can try that movement once more on your own. You can keep your arms up by the sides of your head for a couple of cycles of breath. So it's just this feeling of emptying in the belly as we exhale and trying to keep that empty feeling. So the in-breath comes into the ribs rather than the belly. And then as you exhale, you gather your hands back to the belly. 
conflict. And then what I'd like us to try is then coming into bridge pose with the same sort of awareness. So you're imagining going into bridge pose that you still have this, um, this pool of water on your belly so that your, in, your inhalation comes more into your ribs. So you're trying not to spill the water. So just see how that feels. So you would be standing your feet on the floor, moving on your out breath. So your belly empties, you sink down into your footprints, your pelvis comes up. When you receive your inhalation, try to keep that empty feeling in the belly and widen through the ribs. So if you haven't moved on into bridge pose, I can see a couple of you have still got your legs long. If you haven't moved into bridge pose, bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor. And just take, take a sort of echo of this mudra into bridge pose. So I'll talk you into bridge pose again. So let a breath come in as you exhale, you feel the belly empties, you sink down into your feet, you let the pelvis come up. And when you receive an inhalation, you feel wide in the ribs, you keep that empty feeling in the belly. Now, I do understand if you had dinner not long before class, it might be hard to feel empty in the belly. So, um, good. So just maybe once or twice more, if you like, see how it feels to come up and down into bridge pose with this, this image of the belly as a pool of water. Breathing in. I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. And when you come down from this bridge pose, if you would like to fold your knees into your chest, you can do. So we have one last um, section of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditation, which we're going to just lie down and listen to. And then there's going to be a movement where we'll try following that. So. Again, just settle yourself however you're comfortable in lying, knees bent or legs long. And again, this is a very um, beautiful one, I think. Again, it might be nice to rest your hands on your belly. Yes, if you feel that you're cooling down and you need to put something warmer on, Maria's got a cat on her, so she doesn't need to worry. So. Um, those of you not lucky enough to have a cat blanket, you might want to put on something warm. And yeah, nice to rest the hands on the belly. We will be moving again, but I think if you put on something warm now, it means you won't have to get up again because we are going to finish lying down. But yes, uh, when we do the movement, you, if you've got a blanket on, you might have to poke your arms and legs out from under the blanket, which is fine. So hands resting on the front of your body, if you like. Breathing in, I see myself as space. Breathing out, I feel free. Breathing in space, breathing out free. Just see how it feels to lie quietly now with your breathing, with your body supported by the ground. Breathing in, I see myself as space. Breathing out, I feel free. So have maybe two or three more cycles of breath, just lying here quietly, and then we'll, we'll move on to this last movement we're going to do. So breathing in space, breathing out. 
for you. So in the next movement we're going to do it, we're going to be exploring a little bit that space around us. So you're going to lengthen your legs out on the floor and take them a little bit wider apart than, yeah, than you might normally. So they're, as, they're, they're at least as wide as the narrow edge of your mat. They might be a little bit wider than that, you know, whatever feels comfortable. And then you're going to try and bring your arms up either side of your head, not too close to your head. So your arms are in a similar position to your legs. So you're making a sort of X shape. But what we're imagining here is we're a starfish. And you're going to start to reach each limb and turn away, turn away from your center. So first reach into your right hand. And then reach your left hand away from you on the floor then reach your right heel away from you and then your left heel away from you and keep going round your body like this right hand left hand right heel left heel so the whole limb reaches away it's obviously not just the hand the whole limb is reaching away from the center of yourself right arm left arm right leg left leg so as if you're a starfish reaching out you've only got four limbs but we'll, we'll ignore that fact you're a starfish reaching out to explore what's beyond your immediate environment good good let's see how this translates into movement for you this sense of space moving a little outward into the space around you can keep exploring that a little bit more if you're enjoying it and from there you could then do the opposite movement by folding your knees into your chest and gathering yourself up making yourself small and round and this little bit of rocking side to side across the back of your body And you could take your arms and legs up towards the ceiling and give them a little bit of a shake out. That's nice. That's another way of just slightly exploring that space. And then we will be settling down. We're going to be lying down now for about five minutes or so. And we're going to, I'm going to bring you just briefly through all of these different aspects of the meditation that we've gone through in various movements and positions this evening. So yeah, lying however you're most comfortable. And yeah, I mean, it might be helpful to have your hands on the front of your body as our focus is very much on our breathing. And I thought if we had all these images now, it's one last chance to see which resonate with you. And it might be as we went through them during the class, you might have found that something particularly resonated with you. And here's, an, here's another chance. So our starting point is the simplicity of our breath. Breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. In. Out.
and then breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. Breathing in, flower. Breathing out, fresh. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid, stable, steady. Breathing in, mountain. Breathing out, solid, steady stable. Breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. Breathing in, still water. Breathing out, reflecting. And finally, breathing in, I see myself as space. Breathing out, I feel free. Breathing in, space. Breathing out, free. We've got just another minute or so of lying quietly and perhaps if there's one of those images that resonated with you particularly it might be that you go back to that for though these last this last minute or so or whatever whatever image you liked or even the simplicity of breathing in I know I am breathing in, breathing out. I know I am breathing out.
Okay, thank you everyone. I'm just going to unmute you so we can have a little chat.